Welcome to Healthy Planet, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet on the Think Tech Live Streaming Network series. I'm your host, Dr. Grace O'Neill. Joining me today is Daniel Dinell from Trees for Honolulu's Future. Today we're going to talk about trees. So Daniel, tell us how you became interested in trees. Well, I, I think from small kid times, uh, I always loved trees, um, had a tree house and you know, they're, they're amazing living things um, in the sense of they provide a place to play, a place to um, refresh your mind, your body, your spirit. And of course, they're great for the environment. Uh, there's a great quote uh, that former Vice President um, uh, Al Gore said that the, the very best carbon capturing device ever invented is the tree. And uh, it's just multitude of benefits. And that's what Trees for Honolulu's future is all about. We want to increase the tree canopy because it's good for our city, it's good for our citizens, and it's good for the planet. Yeah. So tell us about how trees also affect the coral reef, because I was reading in your website that it can also help our coral reef. Yeah, absolutely. One of the um, many benefits of trees is um, capturing runoff, stormwater runoff. So any kind of big rain event, if you have concrete hardscape, the water just runs off, goes into catch basins, send it to the ocean. And what's going into the ocean is all that urban debris, if you will. It's, it's everything from litter to oil uh, from vehicles. So trees uh, and other green infrastructure can help clean the water, they can help recharge the aquifer, and it's just a, a great benefit. So yeah, thank you for reminding me. The fish thank the trees as well. Yes, and the coral reef, definitely. <laughs> so Daniel, tell us about how your organization got started. Yeah, sure. Um, my father, who's a retired University of Hawaii professor of urban planning, he was on a um, uh, city task force about age-friendly cities. And I have to say, my father now is 94 years old. Oh. When he was on this age-friendly city uh, committee, he was probably about 85 years old. Mm -hmm. And he <laughs> quickly realized that one of the dangers in the future is heat. And heat is an invisible killer. And one of the most uh, vulnerable populations to heat are old people and very, very young people. And yes. so he started looking around and saying, well, what can we do from an urban planning point of view, from an environmental point of view to help mitigate the uh, impact of rising heat? And he came up with trees, got people together, and we can talk more about it. But what's interesting about Trees for Honolulu's Future is it's not a group of arborists. It's, a, it's, it's really a broad cross-section of community working together for the same vision and goal so that's how I got hooked in. We blame it on uh, my, my dad. <laughs> so how did you, uh, how many different organizations do you work with? And how did you start the organization? So the organization uh, got started with a, a group of like-minded people. Um, and it included academics, it included uh, tree uh, groups, it included uh, developers, um, and really, people who had this idea that we can make a better tomorrow. And uh, like many groups, kicked off with a conference. And that's what was really the catalyst, uh, because it really helped set the conversation and the stage for what Honolulu as a, a city uh, should aspire uh, to be. And so today we work with um, various groups. Um, they're on our website, Smart Tree Specific the outdoor circle, healthy climate communities. But we also work with groups, um, Aloha um, uh, Tree Alliance and, and Sierra Club, others, uh, Trust for Public Land, anybody who's working in this space. What we try to do is connect the dots and really um, bring people together for that common uh, goal of increasing the urban tree canopy. So in regards to the urban tree canopy in Honolulu specifically, how are we doing as a city or as a county, I should say, we're probably looking at the whole county. Sure. Um, well, not very 
well. And um, oh, no. let's call it, <laughs> yeah, this is the long and short of it. Let's call up that slide that lists the different cities. And uh, the bar graph uh, is, is, is yeah. not going to make you very happy. You can see Honolulu in the red. <laughs> We're in the lower third of this sampling of US cities. Um, you know, we're about low 20%. So that means the, the rest, the, the 78% is um, other things. It's, it's buildings, it's hardscape um, and, and the like. So our goal, and, and actually it's now thanks to our advocacy, part of city policy is to increase the urban tree canopy to 35% by 2035. So if you call back up that chart, you'll see, well, what is 35%? Well, 35% is Washington, D.C. Well, so I think, necessary. you know, your viewers can kind of imagine if they've been to Washington, D.C., you know, that's about 35% urban tree yeah, canopy. That's, that's where we want to be uh, in the future. So, um, yeah, we've got our work cut out. There's <laughs> no, no doubt about it. I, I wish I had better news for, for you, but we're not doing as well as we need to do. So how about in the parks? Is there any potential for the state or county to plant more trees in some of the parks like Ala Moana? Or I know there's a park on Ward where it seems like there's more room for trees. Obviously, they have really big ones that are great that I wouldn't want to cut down, but they could probably put a few more trees in. So I'm wondering, or Capulani, is there any potential there to put more trees in the parks? So absolutely. And we work very closely with the city as well as the state. They're obviously major landowners um, and they have these spaces that can support uh, large uh, trees. And you touched upon something really important. It's not just about planting new trees, it's preserving what we got. And in particular, uh, these large uh, trees that could be decades, even a hundred years old, uh, provide a lot of ecological value. So uh, it's not just planting new, it's preserving what we have. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges in parks and other spaces is competing uses. So Kapiolani Park is a great example, um, and there's wonderful trees there. There's also wonderful ball fields there, you know, to play rugby or soccer and, yeah. and the like. So, you know, it's important for the parks department to balance the needs and the wants. Now, where we've advocated, and we were very successful in Kapolono Park in the Kanki area, uh, was putting more trees around the perimeter, you know, so it doesn't impact the play field. <laughs> but but the, the other nice part about it is that as the canopy grows, it will shade spectators, it will shade the street, because you put it around the sides as opposed to, you know, conflicting it with other uses. But there's absolutely uh, great potential in, in public spaces. And how about, is there a potential for when they make new developments? Because what's happening now is there's a lot of development, especially on the west side of the island. You know, Mililani, I think too, is having some new development. And those, I mean, especially Mililani had a lot of trees. And so they might be cutting down trees for a new development. Are there any criteria when, I don't know if you know, but are there any criteria when they apply for developing land because they have to get permits, right? That they have to plant a certain number of trees. <laughs> <laughs> when they develop, you know, a new property. I mean, I think that would be a great requirement, but I don't know if it's it, possible. It, there is a requirement in new developments. So when you have a large scale, um, you know, Mililani Mauka um, and, and, and Koa Ridge, I guess it's the, the new one. There, there are developer requirements for a certain uh, number of trees and placement and, and so forth. And you just pointed out something great because Think about Mililani, Mililani Malka. Those are both planned communi communities. Castle and Cook developed them. And they've got a lot of trees. Um, and it's because they were forced to plant the trees when the development started. And now it's decades later and those trees have ma matured and, and you know, their center medians and so forth. So I, I think the large scale developments are, are not an issue as much as small developments, monster homes, things like that. Where, yeah, where, yeah, where you, you, know, you lose a tree here, you lose a tree there. You know, there was a wonderful mango tree in my backyard. Now it's gone. You know, things yeah. like that are what cause uh, the, the decline in the urban tree canopy. And 
Um, the new developers, like I said, I think they do a pretty good job um, in, in terms of canopy. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it is a tragedy because there are a lot of monster homes and it's very hard to stop it even with new legislation because there's little loopholes that people get around planting trees. So, um, well, well and, and that's, you know, you asked about the regulation. There's, if you're doing a private lot development, single lot, building a monster home, whatever, there's no requirement. So, you know, I just, you know, the requirement is on the subdivisions, these large scale developments. Yes, yes. And, there's, except in a few special districts, there's no restriction on removing a tree. So, you know, you can have a giant tree and just cut it down. A lot yeah. of jurisdictions require a permit to remove a tree over a certain size. And what's exciting about what we can learn from other places is you need to replace it and not just tree for tree. So you cut down a a large, say, mango tree, and okay, I'm going to plant one little tree in replacement. No, they want you to plant the same number of caliper inches. Mm -hmm. So you cut down 20 inches of, of trunk, we want to see 20 inches of new trees go into your property. That's what other jurisdictions do. Uh, Honolulu, yeah. uh, neighbor no, islands, do that. Yeah. don't, don't do, that. do that. Because it's, it's such a problem now. And all these trees are being cut down on these huge monster lot developments, you know. Um, I'm also wondering, what can the individual do? I mean, obviously, people can plant trees in their own backyard. Uh, so I know you have some resources on your website as to how to plant a tree, correct? Yes, yeah. Uh, you can just summarize real quick, um, you know, and then how to sure find the And I know there's, it's quite lengthy to, you know. Well, it's, it's not too lengthy. It's really a lot of common sense, which is get the right tree for the right place and make sure you care for it correctly. Mm -hmm. So that's the key because you don't want to plant a koa tree next to your house because it's going to dis disrupt the foundation. No question about it. So make sure you site the tree properly for the place. Another really important part is and I've had this discussion, you know, uh, Ohia Lehua, beautiful tree, beautiful Hawaiian tree, state endemic tree now, thanks yeah. to the legislature. Yeah. You know, don't plant it next to the ocean in Waikiki. It's it's not yeah, meant to be that. there. Yeah. And, and you know, it's not going to do well with the salt and, and you know, the, the low rainfall. If you're in a high rainfall place, plant it there, you know, it, so... I cannot stress enough, it, it, people get excited about planting a tree, but plant the right tree in the right place and then put the, um, uh, the right care in our website, wealth of information, others, uh, you know, even videos, how to plant a tree. Um, yeah, yeah, I saw videos. Lots, lots of information, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's speaking of websites, uh, I, I see you uh, pulled up the uh, Arbor Day events and these are exciting because every year in November, the first, uh, weekend in November, Hawaii celebrates Arbor Day. Um, and these are places where uh, tree giveaways, um, and it's all sponsored or under the rubric of the Department of Land and Natural Resources. Every county in the state has the opportunity for citizens to go and get trees. 99% of them are free. So, you know, there's no real barrier to getting a, a tree um, and then taking the time to plant it and, and care for it. Um, so, yeah, really urge people to uh, pick the right tree for, the, for their specific location. Yeah. And, you know, another thing that I noticed that's on your website as well, that there are a lot of trees on streets that are cut down. Like we just had a huge tree cut down on the intersection of Wailai. And I mean, I ride every way up that way to work. So um, there was a huge tree and I guess it was probably somehow abutting the power line. And so it was cut down and it was a beautiful tree. And I miss it just, you know, looking in that area that it was in and I'm like oh my gosh that tree they cut it down so I know that on the website it said that you can sometimes obtain street trees I'm sure if it was as big as that tree you might not be able to but how can people try to obtain these street trees that are already grown is it, it easy it, it, it's uh, easy to request you may or may not get your request granted so the mm -hmm. city uh, has a website and I'll make sure you can put it in the show notes <laughs> and, and you know, funny you bring it up, but not 
you know, earlier today, someone emailed us through our website and said uh, they live in uh, Moana Lua area with no overhead power lines. So this is the beautiful place oh, to plant a tree. And he wanted to know how to do it. So I sent him the information on, on how to request a, a street tree. Um, there are other considerations as, as well, like uh, sight lines and so forth. And I think that uh, I'm sure your show has, has uh, dealt with this issue. With, you know, it's a conflict of uses, right? So is, is the, are the cars in charge or are the people in charge? And, yeah. you know, so you don't, the city won't allow a tree to be planted a certain number of feet away from a stop sign, yeah. a certain number of feet away from a mailbox or a driveway. So they, all of these little things just keep shrinking down the, the place where okay. a, yeah. a, a tree can go. So uh, absolutely uh, anyone who's interested in a tree in front of their house they can contact the city. Um, the city will uh, respond. They'll, they'll check out the site, and if it's appropriate, they'll plant a tree. And what the city really asks, and, and we have programs that do this as well, is steward the tree. You know, you're you're the homeowner or a renter. You can haul out a little hose and water it. And yeah. once the tree is established, the tree can take care of itself. It, yeah. it, it will need it will need some pruning and so forth, but but. If it's the right tree, um, it will do just fine. But you got to help. It's kind of like a little kid, you got yeah. a baby. You got to kind of help the baby get yeah. established. And then when they turn to be an adult, they're on their own. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, I went to last year, I think they had an event at KCC. And I happened to just be at KCC. And I saw one of my friends and she said, you know, they're giving out free trees. So I went and I hadn't signed up, but they said, well, you know, if you want some of these trees, they pointed to like an area and I and they said I think there's an avocado in there and I thought oh okay I don't have I mean I had some avocado trees I grew from seeds but it takes a long time for them to fruit so I said okay I'll get an avocado tree but I put it in my yard it's doing fabulously however I think it's a mango tree because the leaf looks like a mango tree but I was like okay I have a mango tree but I'll take another one maybe it's a different species because the leaf looks slightly lighter but um you know it was a fabulous event and I think that's great i mean if people have extra trees are they able to donate to I mean, how do they obtain these trees to give out to the community so so the the tree event that we were involved with some partners in kaimuki at kcc um and i don't recall avocado or mango tree being on the list so i don't know what kind of tree you got so um, I know, mystery. <laughs> just send me a picture later but okay. uh, we can call up the, the first picture uh this is uh, of uh, community volunteers, they actually um, germinated the seeds, planted them, we, we transplanted them into one gallon uh, pots. And, and you can see the, the, the logo on the left side and, and the second slide, one of our happy uh, tree recipients. But it wasn't just about giving away trees, it was this idea of growing community. And that's what we really liked. And, and he's holding up the tree in one hand and the other hand, and I hope you got one, an adoption certificate, yeah. because <laughs> that was really key. This idea that you're not just getting something free and you should go home and kill it. You should go yeah. home <laughs> and take care of it. And, and there's QR code that uh, help people understand how to plant their tree how to care for that particular species of tree. Uh -huh. um, and we actually went back, it's, it's interesting, next month I'll be uh, giving a, a talk at a national conference about the results of the tree planting. Because, you know, it's, it's one thing to give the trees away. The second and more important question is what happened? And we, you know, we found out some people took trees and never planted them. You know, that's interesting, but we want to find out why. You know, what, what were the motivations um, and what were the results? And so we're going to be uh, presenting uh, the results uh, to this conference. That'll be interesting. Yeah. Did you have a survey that you sent out to recipients? Or yes. how did you? Yes. Oh, okay. So we sent I out, uh, a, yeah, I, I, was, I was quite surprised the ones who admitted we never planted it. Um, and, and, you know, that's, that's fine because we want to find out uh, what, you know. Barriers? We, what, yeah, and, and, and you can learn. And then what motivates people? Because at the end of the day, Grace, that's the most important part. Like, how do individual behaviors result in change that will then help the planet? 
And yeah. it's not enough to think about it. It's you got to do it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe these people, they didn't have room to plant the trees and you can theoretically leave it in a pot. I mean, a tree can survive years in a pot. Obviously, it's not optimal for the root system and it probably stunts its growth. But I mean, eventually, if you took the tree out of the pot and you put it in the ground, would it grow? I mean, it might have its growth stunted, but it will still grow and be a it'll still continue to be a tree, so. Yeah, it, it, it's not a good idea to leave them in the pot for extended periods of time because the, what happens, the roots is you to get root bond. Yeah. So when you do transplant it, it's really important to kind of, um, you know, just feather out the, the roots so that they're, they're not in a clump. And then ultimately all trees need um, uncompacted soil. They, they need places, their, their roots are, are just like, you know, our fingers. They need to get out and, and around. And um, the difference is different types of trees need different amounts of space. So, you know, uh, you know some trees are in papaya tree, although I was on a talk once and the, the, um, the host said, well, papaya is not really a tree. And I said, like, oh, okay. Science, technical, okay, but, but we all can imagine the papaya tree. It doesn't need much space. It's, it grows tall. The root system is not very expensive. So um, it's a wonderful tree for a small amount of space. And we haven't talked about it, but it creates fruit that you can eat. And this is a wonderful and very powerful social activity because when it fruits, you probably have too much. And what do you do? You, you give it to your neighbor, you take it to the office, you share the, the bounty of your labor. And what's really neat about that is people then share back. And yeah. that's a really neat cycle uh, of fruit bearing trees that, you know, uh, we really want to just celebrate and encourage. And, and it's just a wonderful thing. Who doesn't want a papaya from their neighbor? Yeah. I will say even papaya trees, and even though it doesn't require a lot of care, it does still require care because I'll tell you my neighbors have been gone for months and they used to water their papaya tree every day. And I think it's dying now, very sadly. So, well, you need to step in and help out. <laughs> I know. I should, I should have been watering. But, you know, I, got, I have so many trees myself. I have a mango tree that's grown. Uh, you know, it's full size. And then I have a soursop tree. I have banana trees. I have two lemon trees. I have three avocado trees. I have one tree from you guys, which I don't know what it is. Yeah, you, you have this great <laughs> unknown tree. Uh. <laughs> yeah. And then I have two plumeria, one in a pot, because my friend said actually with the plumeria, interestingly, it grows better initially in a pot. Yeah. And then once it flowers, you can put in the soil. So I have one in a pot and one in the soil. But, you know, the thing is, the advantage I have is that I have quite a bit of land to plant trees. And my backyard was actually very hot, which was a lot of the reason that motiva motivated me to plant the trees because otherwise I think, you know, if, if I had been, had a lot of room, had a lot of trees already, you can't, there's only so much you can put in. So, yeah, I mean, that's the tragedy. But um, I was wondering too, um, in terms of trees, is there a certain lifespan they have? Like say for a mango tree, I know after a while it stops fruiting. Do you, yeah, do they kind of live on forever and then they just don't grow anymore? I mean, when is it time to, I mean, I know there's obviously those things we talked about before, kind of encouraging people to remove a tree, like stop signs, it growing into the street, you know, being too near a house, but are there other things other than that? So, so the age of a tree, it really depends on the species and, and also how it was cared for, pruned as it was growing. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the best advice I can give is, is there's no single answer except get a qualified cer uh, certified yeah, yeah, yes. to, to check out the tree because there's just like people, you know, some people live to be 110. Yes. <laughs> Others die at age 45. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, it varies based on a whole bunch of factors. Um, but in general, tropical trees like we have in Hawaii uh, do not live as long as, you know, you always hear like, oh, the, the 300 year old oak tree, um, uh, you know, in North Carolina or wherever. Um, and one of the reasons, as I understand it as a layperson, is our trees grow year round 
And so it's these tropical trees tend to grow up and larger quicker and then they'll die sooner as opposed to uh, you know a four seasons kind of climate where a tree will you know spurt in the spring and summer le drop their leaves in the fall dormant in the winter and then cycle again but you know that's why there is no single answer uh, on how long a tree lives but a tree does have a lifetime there, there's no question about it in, in terms of our typical uh, you know trees so you get up to sequoia and you know the redwoods and these trees are a thousand years old or yeah. plus um uh, or joshua tree in california yeah oh, but those okay. are very special and different <laughs> mm -hmm. and how about invasive species are they a threat to our native trees i mean obviously the, the invasive species they still provide you know they still do photosynthesis they're still helpful for climate change but I mean, are they a threat to na a native tree such as an ohia? Yeah, they, they, they are. And we're not a fan of invasive uh, imports, but we, we are, um, we believe it's all about the right tree in the right place. So uh, a banyan tree or a monkey pod tree, you know, those are not native to Hawaii. They were brought here, um, but they're appropriate in the right places. Uh, you know, you think about a park or, you know, Iolani Palace, for instance, beautiful trees there. Um, so the real point is you don't want to plant something that's going to go, um, you know, willy nilly and, and, and overcome, um, you know, Albizia is a great example in the, in the forest, a bad, bad, bad tree. And there's a website called Plant Pono. Uh, that is okay. super easy. We'll make sure you get the, it in the show notes. Mm -hmm. You can just look up the trees and it will give you the score, the invasive uh, Oh, that's fabulous. That's yeah, fabulous. so you can quick, quickly check. Uh, and you just put in the common name, monkey pod, and you know, it, will, it will come back with- Oh, um, that's a great. Yeah, so, so check it out. It goes right back to that right tree um, mm -hmm. discussion. Well, thank you so much. We're out of time, so we have to wrap it up. Uh, but I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. This is Healthy Planet on the Think Tech live streaming network series. We've been talking with Danielle Danielle from Trees for Honolulu's Future. Thank you, Eric, our broadcast engineer, and the rest of the crew at Think Tech for hosting our show. And thanks to you, our listeners, for listening. I'll see you in two weeks for more of Healthy Planet on Think Tech, the show for people who care about their health and the health of our planet. My special guest will be Amber Miyaki from Rapid Ohia Death Statewide. Um, it's a statewide outreach coordination. So if you have ideas for the show or questions for my future guests, please contact me at healthyplanetthinktech at gmail.com. Check out my website at graceinhawaii.com or Instagram at gracefulliving365 for more information on my projects, including future show guests. I'm Dr. Grace O'Neill. Aloha, everyone. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.